So what we're going to be talking about today is um, self-supporting missionary work through publishing. And the challenge that a lot of missionaries face is that they want to work for God, but they don't know how to support themselves. And there is a lot of self-supporting ministries that claim to be self-supporting, but really self-supporting means that you have a source of income that you're able to support the work that you're doing. And you can see place after place after place after place you go. A lot of these independent ministries are popping up and they're seeking to labor for the Lord, but they, they disappear the same way they come up, or maybe they like kind of float around and still exist because it's like an individual that is just kind of living life with a dream. But it, very few times you see that the work is able to be sustained by a team, a body of people as the Lord intended, uh, because there's not that stream of income that support. So when we depend on tithes and offerings and donations, they're very fickle, they come and go. So it's very hard to, uh, to sustain that type of work. So what we're going to be talking about today is how we can be self-supporting and understand the publishing work um, as, as the foundation of what has allowed successful ministries from the days of the pioneers uh, to the gospel to onward. And so we'll, we'll be looking at that. But before we do that, let's begin with the word of prayer. Father in heaven, I pray that you will please be with us and direct our paths and teach us how we can uh, labor for you. Father, everyone here has a missionary spirit who desires to, um, to work for you, to live for you. I pray that you will teach us and guide us, help us to be like you. And we thank you for the opportunity that you've given us to be in, in a place that we can learn these things. Um, many people go years and years living and dreaming and wishing, but they fall short of understanding these principles that if understood and applied can drastically change the life of not only our own, but so many people around us. So Father, I pray that your spirit will be here, that you will guide us and show us um, what your will is for us. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Can someone close the bathroom door? Is this one too? Thank you. So what we're looking at is the, the thing about self-supporting work, in order to be self-supporting, each ministry needs to have a product, it has to have a service, something that it's able to, to provide that solves a need in exchange for, for money. And there's a lot of reservations, like people want to help, like when, when we go and we do something kind to someone or we... Um, we're like giving out books. A lot of times we want to we want to give, 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 and then some people will want to offer. Be like, hey, can I can I like they pull out a dollar or something? And we're like, no, no, don't worry. Um, and we we refuse the very means that God has ordained to be able to support His work. And um, and it's just it's unfortunate because then my heart goes out to the ministers and gospel workers that they try to labor for the Lord, but because they weren't self-supporting. They wouldn't receive funds to support that. Then they would get a like a secular job, and then um, they lose that time that they were able to spend in winning souls for Christ. And I, I've seen it over and over over the years. Just people try and fail and try and fail. But until we understand that ministry and business are not two separate things, they're one. Just like Christ Object Lesson says, then we're going to be um, struggling. In the ministries we associate with, they're going to be struggling too. So what I want to do today is look at some ministries and let's see what are some of the ways that they have been self-supporting. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at some offers. Um, and with these offers, um, we're going to be seeing how we can create an offer that can help to su support um, the work. And so with that, um, I want to say like, like an offer might be like, th there's a concept that if, um, if you have a product that you're selling and if you can't be the lowest price, then there is no strategic advantage of being the second cheapest product out there. 
it's just a race to the bottom in prices and nobody can support themselves just trying to be the lowest, lowest, lowest. And that's what a lot of ministries try to do. And that's where a lot of businesses try. And you know, um, 50% of all businesses that start fail within the first year. And 95% of all businesses no longer exist after the first five years. And the other like 5% doesn't mean that they're thriving. It just means that they're kind of existing. So you have to realize that um, in this world, and, and remember when Jesus was 12? And he's like, wish you not, I must be about my father's what? Business. Well, what was he talking about? He was talking about ministry, the ministry of saving souls. Christ is in the business of winning souls to Christ. I mean, yes, winning souls to himself. And so um, every ministry is a business. And every ministry that if you're if you don't have a way to fund that work, whether that's through like people try to do a job and, and that's totally fine. It's just you gotta spend eight hours of your day to do that, or through a product, through a service, there's something. You have to have a stream of income that's able to support the ministry that you have. Otherwise, you'll just be another statistic. And so um, one of the things that made the Madison College so, so and like a wonder of the world, it was on Ripley's Believe It or Not, is that people would come to this school and then they'd leave, not in debt like every other school, but with a car and extra money in their pocket. I met a guy over in North Carolina, it was actually with that vehicle, we drove over there, um, and he was a student from Madison. He said, I went there in debt. I left with $500 and a new car. And I was like, wow, that's, that's powerful. And then they get the missionary education. And a lot of ministries want to model that so industry and trades and self-supporting, things of that nature. So what we're going to do, um, oh, okay. So the next best thing, instead of, Instead of like, um, in, instead of trying to be the lowest on the block, it's better to just be the highest and then creating an offer, which is like a package of similar things that will help to, um, to substantiate the value or whatever the price that you set. And when you, when you set the price, why are you smiling? Yeah, I was, I was going to talk about that. When you set the price, then you talk about how can you build the value to justify the price so that you actually deliver more value than what you're actually asking in return. So for instance, um, like an iPhone, there's someone who was talking about how they can sell an iPhone for, uh, well, the thing is, if you try to sell this, um, like just as a, as a product, that's it. Then you're competing with all of like the Verizons and the Sprints and all these places that are selling iPhones. And if you can't do lower than them, then there's no strategic advantage of being the second lowest because people won't go for your iPhone. So the best is just go for the highest and just have an offer that justifies that price. So uh, someone was explaining how he can sell an iPhone for $5,000. <laughs> That yes, ridiculous. It, it sounds ridiculous, but I'll explain to you how. Um, he, he went on to say, he's like, well, what if I told you that, that this iPhone has, um, has the direct cell phone to uh, like the most successful evangelist over time? It has Doug Batchelor. It has, uh, you know, um, Andrew Henriquez. It has all of these different ministers and gospel workers that you could just reach out to instantly has a president of the United States, it has a religious liberty in Congress. And when you call from this, this number, they will pick up and they'll listen to you. They'll talk, you can have a conversation and they're there to help you with what you're trying to do. And this, this iPhone has, uh, has courses, like every single course that has ever been like, taught and sermons and, and trainings on medical missionary work, evangelism, publishing, corporate training, it has all of these hours and hours and hours of, of training that has costed like $30,000 in the course of a lifetime of maybe like 40 years of, of learning that's all put together on this one iPhone and it comes with you, it's included in this offer. And, um, and then just kind of like explaining that there, there's, there's a, I only have one of these and so 
Um, mm -hmm. This is gonna go to whoever orders it first. It starts at 5,000. Like this would be like a $30,000 offer, but give it to you for 5,000, go. And then you see that people start to see the value. And that was just an example where when you package things with it, it's not just a product. You just took a $200 phone and increased the value, or perceived value to 5,000, and people will be like, look, I want that. Um, and this principle can be applied to anything. But the challenge is a lot of times when, if we have a product and we get that far, we're trying to sell a product when what we should be trying to do is provide an offer, a, a package of consistent products that help complement and, and aid this process. So, um, that, that's where the offer comes in. Now, um, some, some examples that we have in, um, I kind of want to talk about offers and also like the possible products that could be sold and, and, and how people share. Um, but there's, um, I kind of want to describe how like this evangelism, I want to talk a little bit about a funnel and how that, how that works with the value ladder. Because we talked about the value ladder before, right? Um, does anyone remember the value ladder from our last class? To you, Jana? Parts of it. Okay, good. So the key is right here, you have, you have something that's like, you have free, you give a free value over here, and then this, you ask for a little bit, you ask for more, a little bit more. And so each time it increases as you go up in the value ladder, there's, there's more value um, and there's also more costs. The price increases along with that. So an example, um, those are packages. Right? In, in, in terms of, of evangelism, what are things that, that we do for free that we provide people? Bible studies. Bible studies? Mm -hmm. um, okay. What else? Tracks. Yes, tracks. Very good one. So when you look at these glow tracks, what do you have on the back of the glow tracks? A lot of times they are, they're trying to upsell you to receive a, like if you have a track on like the Antichrist or on uh, medieval history, they'll tell you on the back, they're like, hey, check out this great controversy. If you call this number, we'll send you a great controversy. And so that's what they have where we have these books. And, and you can buy it for like five and 15, 20 dollars. Um, however you want. But then when you buy a book, like for instance, um, let's say someone gets the great controversy and they take this and they're like, this is amazing. I love this book. And then they find out, they're like, wait a second, this is part five of the conflict of the ages series. So they're like, wow, if part five is so good, I wonder what part one or two or three or four is like. So then what they do is that's an upsell where instead of buying one book, you're buying a series that's a package. So now you have the whole Conflict of the Ages series. So that contact goes through book one, book two, book three, book four, book five, and then, is, and then gets a bigger picture like, this is amazing. And then what that, um, what that contact's able to do is they're like, where can I find people like this? Where can I find like the authors and the originators of people who share these books? Then they're like, oh, um, it's like, okay, so it's over at this church. And then um, and then you invite them over to like an evangelistic series um, or, or like, a, uh, like, a, like a class. So they go to some sort of training. And depending on the training, sometimes like if it's evangelistic, then it's going to be free for the community. Or if it's like a cooking class, they might charge you for food or something. Um, but for, uh, for the training, like, like for um, the evangelists, that, that usually costs more because the evangelists are supported financially through the, the work that they're laboring and the church hires the evangelists, come over, gives them a gift, an offering 
to be able to take care of that. Um, and then that, that evangelist has together a step-by-step, -step, like links in the chain of truth. Remember how we were talking about the chain of truth, how the gospel is, it has an order and it has a method to it. So they're able to kind of package this 30 day program that each night you learn something more about Daniel and Revelation, about the final redemption, your walk with Christ and coming to Jesus and getting forgiveness, knowing where we are in this world's history. So they go through that training, then they're like, wow, that's powerful. Then they get baptized, then they, then they become the body of Christ. And then they're like, wow, I, I want to go share with other people. So in order to share with other people, they're like, wow, I need some training on it. I need to know what to do. So then they, they take some classes and they like go to some like, school, medical missionary training, corporate training, Bible training, publishing training. They learn something that they could um, use for um, spreading the gospel with others. And that's usually like you go to meet ministry and it's like $5,000 for three months. You go to Meeman Wilson School and it's like $3,000 for a month. You go to uh, the different schools. Th this school, the, the goal was to do $1,000 a month. Um, and that's, um, it didn't really work out too well. Um, different schools have tried to do different amounts um, to provide training for people. And that, that's way less than seminary. If you go to seminary, you get some serious debt. Um, but that you see that this is like the value ladder when it comes to evangelism into becoming a member of the body of Christ. There's, there's a ladder to this. There's steps in the process. So what this is basically is kind of like a funnel too, where um, the funnel is that people get the, the free literature, they get the publications, whether they're videos, their books, their tracks, their Bible studies, then they go, maybe they purchase a book or a DVD. Then they go through um, an event. Then they go through, uh, like they're baptized, they go to like a camp meeting. Church would be one too. Right? Yeah, that would be like an event. And they go to school. So it's kind of like, it's not exactly in that order, but you see that the funnel here, more people attend this and then less people attend this, but, uh, uh, but some people more, they purchase books or a DVD and they learn more and then less people attend the event. But as you go down, they're getting more for what they're receiving. They go to an event church or evangelistic series or something. It can't be even less people travel to go to a camp meeting, but it's a bigger event where people get a Greater blessing. They get to study the Bible for for a week, and then even less people go to a you know the training that we have. So that um, that's basically like a funnel, and it's just it's explaining a journey. It is a path that your contacts go on as you're sharing the gospel with them, um, and it's kind of similar to like when we're at the door. We give them a track. We tell them a book. We invite them to events. We might take them with us to an evangelistic series, and it's a it's the same process. Um, but what's good to have? Does anybody have any questions? You're doing a good job. Is has any light bulbs came on yet? Is there anything that like stood out to you that seemed like well, never really saw that there before. Well, the last time when I was looking at the ladder, I didn't have those words, but now you, you, it's more direct, and I'm getting a better understanding. So thank you, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah, it just repeating the same thing in different words. And yeah, yeah, because you said the top one with the school. That's weird because my thing was to tell everybody come out of New York, come from the city, come to the country, but. That's the last part of it. That is the last thing. Because the thing is, like if the people in New York, they're not getting the videos and publications and, and, the, and the modern publishing, then be like culture shock when they come. super culture shock. They will never come. Because when they go here, it points them to the books. Then they get more education. Then they go to like an event. Like, like Her uh, Herzl, he came out to an event. And then he goes back home. And then the next step would be to come to the school. So things like that. 
Yes. It's a shining light that more and more, more and into the perfect day. Exactly. Amen. And what's beautiful about this this value ladder is that you give people the opportunity. Those who are here that want to go deeper, they have a choice. Those that are here that want to go deeper, they have a choice. And they have a choice. And usually it's about 10% of these people want the next step. 10% of them want the next step. 10% of them. So it, it's it's like kind of like the more people you're able to reach, it's 10%, 10% like as a, as a general rule of thumb. Um, but that, that's true. If we try to start here, which many schools are trying to start here, and it's, it's hard. They're struggling to find people, especially young people. They're like, where are the youth? This is where the youth are. Um, and so, uh, so go ahead. Um, so another thing maybe you, that you could add for the free would be like videos. Yes, definitely. Videos. Absolutely. That's going to grab their attention. If they want more, then they will search for the book. Social media. You know, social media. Yeah. 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 Just socializing with them too. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, absolutely. Was there any other aha moments that stood out to someone? What about you, Carmen? Anything stand out to you? What about you, Tina? It makes complete sense. What What makes sense? I mean, you can't start like from a, you can't miss a step. Yeah, you can't miss a step. It's like Peter's ladder. There's round after round in the in the steps. Okay. What I want to do is, in order to create, and, and what, I, what I'm suggesting, what I'm submitting, is that every ministry should have a value ladder. Like, this is kind of a big picture in the cause of God and evangelism, but what I'm suggesting is that if you want to, ex if you want to thrive in, the, in uh, the evolved economy, and if you want to be self-supporting, you need to find something that you can offer as a ministry that is on this free area that you're providing value, you're developing a community, and then you have something simple that they could like opt into. And a lot of people, they just get as far as a book. Like their first thought is just like a book and all this stuff they get for free, or they have dreams of this, but they don't know how, how, to, how to communicate to people in a way that they'd want to buy that. And people come to me and they're like, hey, I'm starting a school, how can I get some young people? And uh, they see that, I, that I'm able to bring people to school, but they're like, how are you bringing all these young people? Well, it's because I'm developing a relationship with them here, and I'm suggesting other resources for them to go here, but because I've provided so much value to them in the beginning, they're more willing to take the next step. And like the first school that we did, um, it was Bright Division School, this, I think it was 2014 when we did it, is, uh, this is old, it's been through some better days, but um, I was doing Bible studies, like five to seven of them a day, and then I started doing group studies, and we had maybe like 10, 12 people there, and then like out of a lot of the people I was studying, I was inviting them to school, and a lot of them said no, but 10 of them said yes, so then they came, and they became students, and we were, we were teaching in class just like this, and for three months, it was like an evangelistic series. You get a map out exactly what you want to share in these Bible subjects, lifestyle, prophecy, the Bible, health, all these things. It was incredible. It was great experience. Um, but we can't just skip here. And it's just like, huh. But what's beautiful too, what I want to do together is let's brainstorm what could be an offer, like what could be things that we provide for our audience, for the young people who need the Lord that are seeking to find their calling and direction in life. What can we give them that will help them along this ladder? And the way that I, 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 I would like to do this with you is let's put together a list of possibilities and then like sky's the limit. No, no bad examples. Uh, time and money isn't a resource. Um, just there's no limitations. What would be just amazing for us to have that will help them to get the greatest value and the best results? Let, let's look at the options. And one of the ways to figure that out is just we could pray. And we can look at, I mean, we can think and then come up with stuff. But another way is to look at examples of already existing ministries and businesses. You can do a remix where you take something that's working 
remix it to our niche, our concept, our you know ministry training, and then we could we can get some principles from that. And and to realize how you yourself became a Christian. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Yes. Um, uh, Carmen, would you be willing to um, take notes on this on Notion um, about this because so that we can add some things there? Because I know that you're good at taking notes. And I sent the link on. Um, on the uh, Danger School of Health. So now you can look at those. Okay, you can edit. Um, so I want to look at these four categories. We have physical products. We have um, we have the written word, we have the spoken word, and we have other stuff. With what other stuff? I'll give you an example. It's things that don't fit under those categories, but um, we can just see what are the types of things that we can offer to people. Um, when you think about an education for ministry training, what do you think is something that would be very valuable for people finding direction, understanding the calling, knowing how to share the gospel? Yes. Bible studies. Bible studies. But we're talking about like a format. So like in what kind of format? Like in, in what? So how how do you deliver um, Bible studies? You can do that physically or online. How do you deliver Bible studies? So like, I'll give you an example. We have a Bible reading. Is that showing up on the picture? Mm-hmm. Is it legible? Yeah, I can read it. That's good. Nice. So we have Bible reading. We have. Um, that could be a video too. We we have like books. So. Um, Book and reading videos. Yeah. So like a Bible reading video. Um, you get to have it on paper while oh, that's written. Yeah, it could be a Bible reading, but like a printed, printed one. You could get together in a group and do it. So, I think what that fits under is um, other stuff. That would be like a, a group study. Group. Yeah. So that people can come together in, from all over and they can receive training like in an event. And, and you can also like, you know, like the um, training that um, Doug Bachelor had, he packaged it. Yep. What training? Remember the 20 um, Bible studies that you would take to school and read? Oh, yeah, that would be a Bible reading, right? It would be just a physical Bible reading. Okay. Yes. And what's interesting about that is here, Meet Ministry put together these, these like 22 or so uh, uh, readings, which is, which is very interesting because what you're able to do is you can give them Bible studies on these subjects, and then you can take these questions from the videos, you can transcribe the videos, and you can extract the questions that are coming from the sermon, from the lecture, the health class, or whatever, and then... You put it in Bible reading format, question Bible text, question Bible text. 
he has some science, he has some spirit of prophecy quotes, he has some Bible verses, and then you just put it um, in this format. And this right here is about an hour long sermon um, as you're able to give a presentation. And on the back, he has, he has the upsells. He has the other, the other pieces, and they use this to support themselves in ministry. They don't want you to print it. They don't want you to share it. They just want you to purchase each of these things because um, that's one of the ways that they support themselves. But um, he's been teaching on these subjects for many years. So one day he decided to take these videos and subjects and he just put them all together in a step-by-step -step way. So what this is, is um, it's, it's kind of like a systematic, um, it's a compilation. It, it's a compilation of uh, subjects. And that, that's what a lot of Sister White's books are too. They're compilations of books. Like a lot of these books, like Corporate Ministry, Corporate Evangelist. Who's been blessed by Corporate Ministry books? Amen. That's right. And that is a complete compilation, just taking extracts from a few books, from a variety of books, put them all together in one, and then you have a different product. You have something brand new. So it's, it's very simple. Um, you can get quite a following by doing that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, who has heard about um, Forks Over Knives? What, what, it, what do you know about Forks Over Knives? What is it? It's a documentary, right? That's right, documentary. Yeah. So we'll put that over here. Is that all the documentary is? I think it's a compilation of different um, studies that have been done by, um, it's been a while since I've seen it, but I, yeah, it's a compilation. Of like research and studies? Yes. Yeah, and, and so it's interviewing the doctors that actually were involved in the research? Yes. But what did it come from? It's not. No, it's not. It came from um, China study. The China study. Thank you. So that came from a book. So these these um, doctors, they studied the scientists. They studied the health of these people in China. And this huge study, the largest study that's been done on like health of, to that magnitude, hundreds of thousands of people. Mm -hmm. And from that China study book, they created a documentary. And from the documentary, it was so popular. Who knows what else they created with it? Go ahead. They created a recipe book. They created a recipe book. Mm -hmm. And so with this, they so you're telling people about a plant-based diet that... Um, what was that, Mom? Yeah. This is part of an offer. It's part of a package. And so you have this that you're able to, um, to provide. And it says, forks over knives, the cookbook. So it's part of the same branding, but you see that it's a value ladder. So you get the um, you get the DVD, you get the that, and then that you know I'm not positive, but I'm sure they do speaking engagements with this information. They do podcast interviews. They do groups that you can attend, and you just receive all the training and information here. They've created an entire business model of being supporting, self-supporting through educating people about health. And it's a very simple thing that ministries are able to do. Yes, ma'am? I may say thing too, because um, when, when they do something like that, there's always followers. And then they want to speak on, on you know, YouTube or something about what they learn and how they're following it and stuff like that. It's true. Which, um, creates a lot of attention too. The thing about cookbooks is, and, and we can put a cookbook up here too, like under written word. So um, this is cookbook. Well, what's the difference between physical and uh, written word? Um, the um, the DVD is physical. Something physical could be like a uh, this T-shirt is is um, 
physical, like a, um, a pop socket. They have pop sockets that you have like branding for and you give those out. Uh, this water bottle I got at the event, influencer event, this is physical. So uh, kind of things of that nature. But uh, yeah, these books can be physical just by default. They can also be digital, but they're, they're under the written word category. And really, it doesn't matter as much where you put them, but they could be either or. Um, so um, I want to talk about cookbooks. See, a lot of people have this unfortunate misconception. A lot of God's people, they love cooking. They want to help people with cooking. But they think that in order to... Um, I'm not sure that's strange. I thought I had something. What are you looking for? No, it's right here. They think in order to cook, they need to put together... This has, what, 302 pages of information, um, and they need to come up with a 302-page book with, like, four, like uh, 400 recipes before they could bless anyone. What's the name of this book, Mom? Oshi Goes. Oshi Goes Cookbook. Over 100 vegan recipes to glow them. from the inside out. Mom, what's the story behind this book? How did this book start? Well, she started on a blog, and then people started following her and coming to her, and then she, she started, she was sharing her family, you know, what she does with her family, and then she found that they liked um, her mm -hmm. recipes, and so she went more in that direction. Yeah, so she created a cookbook one recipe at a time. She published, like, all of these recipes can be found for free on her website. And she published them as a blog. Just took a photo of some food, put together a recipe, slapped it on a like a WordPress, and then boom, you could reach thousands of people. And and like that is a powerful way to spread the word out. And that doesn't compete with her sales. It actually created a massive raving community that were anxious when she was able to see she allowed uh her audience to determine what the best recipes are, the ones that people want the most. She might be like, I like this the most. This is my favorite. I think the quality of this is better. But she didn't do all that. She published the best that she had and let the market determine what they wanted. So she takes 100 of the best blog posts, recipes, packages them in a little book, and then she physically prints them, and then this becomes a number one bestseller. It just blows up in sales, and that helps to support the ministry. Now, she's, of course, she's not, um, she's a, she's a see, New York Times bestseller. She's not Adventist, um, but the concept we're seeing, Adventists can do this. There's nothing stopping us from getting a blog, posting one recipe at a time, one Bible reading at a time, one, one study at a time, one video at a time. We can see what people really, really want, and then, and based on the views, the engagement, the shares, uh, then we can take that, transcribe and compile, and we can have these physical books. But I find that if we start with ancient publishing first, then you're going to get the problem that we're facing, where so many people have a dream to write a book, but they never do it. And the very few that do do it, which is hundreds and hundreds of thousands a year, they write books and they flop. Nobody cares for them. Nobody wants them. They weren't really, the market didn't have a place for them. They could be great information, but when, whenever you have something, it's essential to build a community. You, you explain the journey that you're going on. This is where we're going. These are challenges being faced. This is what I have to share. You're adding value. People want to connect with people. We're living in a day and age where people are not interested in the faceless corporations. They're less and less uh, they're more detached from the faceless corporations and they're going to influencers. They're going to individuals that they, they are listening and they care about their, their opinions and their recommendations. A lot of times when you're trying to buy something online, you're trying to figure out, well, who buys this? Like when I'm shopping for a camera, I want to find a camera and I'm like, okay, what's the best cameras in 2019? And I find like Peter McKinnon, someone who I enjoy his videos. He's a camera guy. It's like, oh, he knows his stuff. 
if he's recommending I get this, then that's probably the one I should get. He knows more than I do. And so people, um, like I don't care about what Canon's advertisements are, Nikon's advertisements, Sony's advertisements. It's the, it's the people we know, like, and trust that we listen to. And that's what, uh, where the generations are going to. Our generation greatly is more swayed by individuals and personalities rather than faceless corporations. Um, I was just going to say that, um, going back to the cookbook, you might not have all those recipes, but somebody around you might have a good recipe. So if you got one good recipe from everybody in the church, you know, each each training, I mean, each uh, step there, if you collaborate with people, you, you can make, make that next step. That's right. That's absolutely right. You don't even have to have all your own recipes. You can collaborate with the recipes of others and you just make a compilation of that. And it's powerful what you're able to do. Um, and you know what else she did with, with, with this? She took this, her blog, and she made an app. You can find Oshi Glow's app on the Play Store and iTunes, and you can just search through and find some really awesome plant-based recipes. And they're super fast and easy. You can base it down if you're gluten-free, if you're dairy-free, if you're whatever, and they're all vegan recipies. Um, and if you don't eat like nutrition yeast or whatever, you can identify that. So from a blog, you can have a cookbook. From a cookbook or a blog, you can also have an app. You're just repurposing things. So I, I think that would be under other stuff. But are you getting are you are you getting what's going on? There's something else that was really interesting. You can see a cookbook, a cookbook that I recently got. This guy's like a marketing genius. But um, he he did this thing called the One Funnel Away Challenge. And here, this is like a 30-day course. And um, where did we have a 30-day? We were just talking about something for 30 days. Oh, it was the evangelistic seminar. So um, these is, is like a 30-day program or a 30-course class program where what I realized is the most successful ministries have that community around us like a body. But in order to do that, you have to, there's like an indoctrination phase. There's like a, a, a phase that you're able to share with them. What are the unique things that you're trying to share? What are the messages you want to say? The, the key points. Like I realized even within like God's remnant church, there are several groups, cliques, individuals, ministries. You look at the most thriving ministries, they have certain points that they have a burden to share. They have certain points that they want to communicate to the people that are around. Like I could usually identify who you listen to by just say a few key phrases and then boom, I know how much time you spend listening to this preacher, that preacher, that preacher, because you're using the watchwords that identify you with that community. And if you don't have a community, if you're not building a community with the ministry, then you're, your ability to influence people is going to be very sporadic. It's little spurts and fits and things here and there. And that's what uh, people don't understand is uh, like the whole church, whole church concept is you have a body of, you have members coming together for a common goal, common purpose. And we have to drive it. Every, every church has a different culture. Every church has a different like a emphasis personality and you go and like no two churches are alike in every particular. So, and, and the best cultures are ones that are intentionally done on purpose. Mm -hmm. So basically, um, this is, this is ClickFunnels and, um, ClickFunnels is interesting because they did, um, oh, it's not here. Um, no, I, I don't have it. Um, I think they ran out, but um, ClickFunnels explains kind of like a funnel and how it how it fits with any business, any product, any service, any anything that you could use. You could use a funnel uh, for sharing with. And what's interesting is they put together this 30-day game plan 
which is like an online course that gives you a, like a training for how to use the program, what to do, the, the concepts behind this. And then uh, it shows you, this is like very low on their value ladder. So like step one, you get to understand the concepts behind this and how to use the program the, uh, and everything. Um, but, and then he, he shows you step by step. What he did, uh, the guy who, who did that, his name is Russell Brunson, he asked, um, they have what they're called the two comma club. Everyone who's made it over a million dollars on just one funnel. And, um, and he sent him an email. He's like, look, if you were given 30 days, and at the end of 30 days, you had bills you had to pay. But, and you lost all of your following, all your community, all your publishing, everything, except for your marketing knowledge. What, what would you do step by step for 30 days in order to pay off your bills if you had to start from scratch? Step one, two, three, four, what would you do? And um, he asked them and they sent an email um, step by step what they would do. And there was like 60, 60 of those millionaires, they responded. And then he took them and he literally just compiled their, their answers together in this book. And it's just like, it's in each chapter is a different um, person's response. And it's step by step for 30 days. Now, why does that matter? Because what we're doing is this remix principle where um, like the, like imagine being able to ask, go to, um, Think about some of your favorite evangelists, your favorite preachers, your favorite gospel workers. Go to Maimon Wilson. You can, you can ask 30 medical missionaries who have sanitariums, who have, um, who have this experience and understanding, and they've been decades in the, year in, in the work of God, and you just interview them, and you're like, hey, if you had to start over all from scratch, you didn't know any of the people that you know, you, you, uh, you knew everything you know now, but nobody knew you, you didn't know them, and you wanted to, to like, re, you wanted to learn um, how, how to gain the skills and the opportunities, what would you do if you had to start from scratch? What, what would be like your first year focus? What would be your five year focus? And they tell you, each minister might, will tell you exactly how to get started in ministry, how to be self-supporting, because these people have been around for decades. They understand how to be self-supporting and sustain the work. And they'll tell you what are the concepts that they'd be able to do. Um, and then you could, you could just interview them in audio or video. You can transcribe that. You can put together a book. How many people do you think would want to read a book that's asking all of these successful evangelists, what would you do if you had to start from scratch? Who would want to read that book? Yeah, I would. I would too. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. I was just going to say that by asking questions like that and um, giving the answers, it cuts out all those those mistakes that they made. It, it like, yeah. like lays it out for you without all those mistakes. Yeah. So. Yeah. And people are willing, like, time is more valuable than money. That's like one thing that like we need to realize. There are some people who would are willing to spend 10 hours doing something so they can save like $50. But it's just like, man, I remember in ministry doing that type of stuff, it just leaves you behind. You're gonna, you're gonna go out because it's like, as much as we have a big heart and we wanna go change the world and we wanna help people, Ecclesiastes says money answers all things. And with resources, you can pay for workbooks. Like a workbook here, could be the difference. Imagine if you're getting missionary education and you had something you can fill out, like at, with the Bible studies or the sermons, you're able to have practical application questions. You're able to see like, how does this fit in your life? What can you do tomorrow to apply what you're learning? And here is step one, two, three. Start doing this immediately. Stop doing this immediately. And it's very tangible directives to be able to apply the word of God to your life in the training that you've received here, how much more valuable would that be if you had a workbook that you can go through mm -hmm. and fill out? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But um, 
and you have a checklist like do this first here's an actionable step here let's brainstorm your life calling your life direction some goals that you have let's um let's just go through this and if you had a a workbook it'd be a lot better but you know what stops a lot of ministries from having stuff like this time and money because um like people may have a great desire but if, if if they don't work smarter and continue to work harder then uh, and then also when they do put together something so amazing like this they give it away for free because of the concept like freely you receive for the give but it's not free to put something together like this mm -hmm. it costs a lot of time and spirit process says time is money in order to put something like this together and the experience the skills the assets um, you're when people pay for things, they're paying for value. That's something that you should really consider. Uh, when people buy things, they're buying for an exchange of value that they're receiving or perceived value that they that they're receiving. They are also on um, if they pay for something, they value it more. Yes. Definitely. Yes, and that's the whole principles of corporating. That's why it's better to sell a book than. Um, just give it away for free because when you get free books people are like okay I'm gonna put that on shelf but when they pay for it like someone sold me a book back when I really didn't like reading and I was just like I didn't really want to but he was just so he's like this was so changing my life everyone needs to see this this is an amazing thing it's like when you see this you'll get this this and that and I'm like I do want all those things okay I, I'll, I'll give I was like I don't want to pay twenty dollars he's like if you buy it today, I'll give it to you for ten dollars. Please just take this book. And I'm like, I don't want to pay ten dollars. I I'll buy it for five. And he's like, okay, you can have it for five. So I got this book, and I just wanted low bomb so he could like stop. But um, he ended up accepting it. I'm like, okay. It's like, <laughs> all right, here's five dollars. I took the book. It was an amazing book. It was the A.T. Jones, the National Sunny Law by A.T. Jones, and that dialogue that he had, like in. Congress like speaking to the judge, Senator Blair, and, and like before the Blair bill, it's like that was a dynamic conversation. And I got home and I was just like, man, I bought this book. I don't want to like, I don't like reading a whole lot, but I read that book. I got my money's worth. I paid five dollars, so I'm going to read it. But if that man just gave it to me, there's no way I would have read it. Mm -hmm. So we are actually doing people a disservice by not charging them for the the word of god that we are providing for them the training that we're giving people like i find even like in in schools oftentimes the students that do not pay are some of the most difficult some of the most um, needy and distracted individuals and they take the education for granted mm -hmm. the students who pay they see that there was an expense, they're gonna get their experience, they're gonna wake up and in the time they wake up, they're gonna show up to class, they're gonna be engaged. When it's time to work, they're ready to work because they don't wanna miss anything. I've seen students who have worked for months saving up so they could attend school and they put everything together so they could be there and they were there, they were present. But I've seen students who are like, oh, I can't afford this and I don't have that. It's like, can I still come? It's like, oh, it's like the heart strings. Like, okay, come over. And then they're distracted, they're dating, they're, they're interested in like all these things and they've got this other agenda. And then it's just like, man, yeah. it's like, why? So we have to realize, and this is a thing that ministries need to get, is that um, it requires funds to operate institutions. Whether it is a church requires funds, whether it's a, a school, a publishing house, a sanitarium, anything a bible working operation all of it requires funds to operate and i'm telling you there's so many gospel workers that want to establish institutions they see the vision but they don't want to charge and I see the fruit of that so one of the things that's amazing about this if you just like um there's a concept like if, if there's something that you can grasp from this it's that you can like i want you to just when you see ministries when you see offers from other businesses and churches and ministries and schools just kind of think about like what are they providing like what is the offer that they have 
um, I, kn I know you have a mechanic background, so when you go to a Jiffy Lube, what they'll do is they'll give you a free checkup, like they'll just kind of check you out and just do like a diagnosis a little bit. Um, and then they'll help, and then they'll do like an oil change and that's like number one on the value ladder. And then as you, as they like change your oils and fluids, then they're like, oh, hey, this thing is broken. Like you need to replace your filter. You need to change your, your alternator. We could do that. Or they'll, they'll upsell you different works that you need. And, and they realize that by giving you something at a super discount, it will actually lead to more sales in the lifetime value of the customer. And so all of these things are, are meant to bring you to the next level of uh, service and expense. Every, all these successful businesses that are existing, they operate with a value ladder, some sort of funnel that people go through, whether they recognize it as a funnel or not. So what I want you to do is just do this like offer remixing and you can see what, is, what are these ministries doing that are working so well. Um, but the reason why I pulled this out is because in this one final way, he, he saw how valuable and popular cookbooks were. And he's like, you know, what if we had a cookbook? And, and you know, he, he's talking about sales funnels. And, and then he's like, well, how are we going to do that? It's like, hmm, well, let's take all of the components of a funnel where you have like the page, you have the funnel, you have the elements, you have the offer, you have, you have these different pieces. And let's call these like the recipe the like the kick the ingredients the the instructions the um the outcome and he just like broke it down he was showing it was it was a kind of like a uh, bridge it was kind of it's like to understand a funnel it's kind of like baking a cake you need this piece you need this piece you need that piece so the thing is no matter what industry whatever niche whatever training like it could be a um it could be evangelism training it could be um it could be publishing and all of it could have like a um, a cookbook approach. You can com you can liken just about anything to uh, baking, um, and so you're not limited to just like food when you're looking at cookbooks. But um, the thing about this is they give you a lot that like they could have charged easily like several thousand dollars for this one funnel away challenge with like how much time of, of these people that they were, they were just pouring into and the worksheet and everything and just value. handed to you. What was that? Yeah, the value of it. Yeah, the value was just value. extremely out, like outnumbered in value and underpriced. And so it was a hundred dollars for the entire month. And if you recommend one person to sign up for it, then you get your hundred dollars back. And so they're just like giving this to you for free, but they realize that if they can teach you these principles, they'll have you um, as a, a part of the ClickFunnels community for a longer period of time. So they realize the more value you give up front means that more people will join you up the value ladder as you go. So it's like, it's a very interesting concept. I talked to, um, talk to these guys. Has anyone ever heard of these people? Jet Blue Light? Yes. Yeah. Little Light Studios. Mm -hmm. So what's really interesting about Little Light Studios is who can tell me what Little Light Studios does? Come on, you want to explain what Little Light Studios is? Well, they produce content that, or well, it exposes how how like the deceptions and little subtle things that we find in in media, um, and how that's changing the way people think and kind of setting them up for for something bigger. Yeah, absolutely. And it's interesting because when we're talking about like finding our calling and, and what we're called to do, they, the God put this burden on their heart to start this ministry because when they were high schoolers, they were into media and film and they were filmmakers. And then 
they had this dream. They grew up in the church and they had this dream to like record films. So they went to Hollywood and they got involved in just like this dark stuff. And they were just not living up to life that they had, but they had a passion for film and videos. And so that's what they were doing. And then so they were exposed hardcore into this realm, but then they had this turning point that they wanted to give their hearts to Jesus. And they're like, Lord, we wasted so much time in this Hollywood world. And we've like, we've just been doing, we've been developing our skills and using them for Satan. What, like, what can we do? And God's like, I will redeem your talents and your skills. All that time you had in Hollywood, you're now able to produce Hollywood battlefields. You are now ready to expose the false system of worship, the star worship, the Hollywood stars and football stars and basketball stars and all this stuff. So they're putting together these packages because they are creating content to help people uh, that represent like who they used to be the stuff that they struggled with, they want to help others. They want to teach others what they wish they were taught when they were just getting started. And so there they found their calling and they've been blessed a lot of people. It's been a tremendous blessing in my life and in Cameron's life and moms and a variety of different people have been reached through that. So what I found to be amazing is that, this is great. Um, they have this, like Battlefield Hollywood is a series. So it just goes through several um, things and it's like a package of different series of presentations. They got slides and they pretty much do the same presentation everywhere that they go. Uh, and they explained to me the way that you, they, they've supported their ministry. See, I went, I went to their place in August because um, they invited me to share, share my testimony about how their ministry has really changed my life and I'm, I'm here largely because of their influence uh, uh, that God uses to help me to pull me out of that world. Um, and then, and so now I'm interested in media ministry too. Uh, they're recording my testimony and I was just interviewing these different ministries because I was trying to figure out how are they being self-supported? How are they like operating? What is their journey to this path where they are? And they explained how they basically, they put together a presentation, a message, and that was like, this is their niche. And they, what was fascinating is they, they were publishing, exposing the media stuff, but then they're like, well, we want to talk about other things, like maybe the state of the debt, or we want to talk about, um, we want to talk about like living pure lives as, as a young person or about true education or things like that. And so they found that when they started publishing that type of content on their YouTube channel, people were like, what are you doing? You're Little Life Studios. Like, stop publishing this stuff. And like, they wouldn't watch and they were kind of complaining. They're like, we want to know about like exposing the media. And they were kind of like, well, I, I think we've been doing that for a while. It's like, don't you want to know about other stuff? And they're like, no. It was kind of an interesting eye-opening experience for them. But they realized that the niche that they chose was in um, – exposing media so when they switch to other subjects the, 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 the audience was just it dropped their attention was dropped so the thing is when you consider yourself as like where do you go like realize the, some of the most successful ministries they're known for some specific things that they do like am, amazing facts when you think amazing facts you think of like evangelism basic doctrines you think of just going through the fundamentals and just educating those people i mean how many people have been blessed by doug Lasher here Amen. i mean so many of us but that's what it's for and if you think about amazing discoveries you think walter byatt you think of like some uh like total onslaught you think of uh the like exposing some of the the, the freemasonry or the deep scientific christian science like not Christian science, but like, um, like the scientific, science yeah, like Bible science and have like creation science and things like that. Um, and he's just, he's a scholar, but he was a professor. So that's what you think of. Um, you don't usually think of a lot of all these other things or, or even if they might do some of those things, really what they're known for is like one or two or three or, or a few things. Yes. And, and it's, it's, you, you can really relate when you think if you ever try to just change your life overnight and be a different person, people can't see you as a different person, not, not until for a long time. And, and for 
like little little light studio to do that it's like it's a culture shock mm -hmm. they're not behaving who they who, who they are known to be yeah yeah right and there was even a there was even someone who was working with them that was getting very interested in gardening that was really interested that god was pulling them into like knowing about the soil and gardening and organic growing and they wanted to produce content for that but it's kind of like it's like like they support gardening and they support that work but it's just like under the name little light studios it just it's kind of confusing of the messaging they, they're not necessarily the same thing so they just realized with love and respect they had like god called them to to separate into different places and there's nothing wrong with that there's just there comes a time where you know god's calling you somewhere else you might have your start with this type of thing but it also shows that like your beginning doesn't determine your future like your past doesn't determine your future and you can change you, you can go a different direction um according to what the lord has you to do um and and so that was really eye open. I was like, huh. And then they explained how they got to where they are today. That basically they put together these slides. I was asking them, uh, do you ever like feel that you're doing the same thing over and over and gets repetitive or like too much? And they're like, no, because every church we go to, every camp meeting, every school, every place that we teach at, most of them, we ask how many people have heard of Little Life Studios? Most of them don't raise their hand. Like just, it is a very unknown thing. And I mean, there are so many, like they get hundreds of thousands of views and lots of people are checking this stuff out, but they're still, they just, just scratch the surface. There's a great need of this in further ways where there, where people haven't heard. And there's so there's always new people coming too. Yes. And babies are being born every day. And, um, what they explained is that they had these slides and they would go and they would speak at churches, camp meetings, prayer meetings schools universities and then there they would sell the dvds in the back they would sell these dvds they do a presentation then they would upsell like a set or they might just have the time to teach for like artificial atmosphere which is all about video games and they don't have time to go through a six-part series of that battlefield hollywood you know and then so they would they would say hey you can buy this on the store they have it on the website they sell t-shirts so they'd have that and that's how they support themselves and when you go to, like when I went to Little Night Studios, their recording set, their studio was like, whoa. It's gotta be like hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of like camera gear, stage, lights. Like they had like a row of desktops where they all are able to edit videos, do high-end graphics, big screens. They had this um, hub for um, sharing, file sharing. Everyone in the room has access to the same high-speed like files in which terabytes and terabytes of space, that right there is like several thousand dollars. I went home to research, how do I do that? I'm like, whoa, that's how I remember I did. Yeah. And then, um, but the thing is, like their system was so set up and they focused on the Lord bless because they had a product. And, um, and it was like, the more talks they did, the more attention was gravitated to the DVDs. They sold more DVDs then more talks opened up because of those DVDs. Then they did more talks, more DVDs. And it was just a cycle of educating and supporting, educating and supporting. So what's beautiful is the more sales you do, the more souls are reached. The more money you make, the more the gospel is going to the world when you have an information product business model, which is amazing because I, that's what the whole... That's what this is, like Ministry of Healing. It's like the more of these books you sell, the more the gospel goes to the world. So the key is to sell as many as you can. Um, and the proceeds of this book, do you know what the profits went towards? School? Sanitariums. Yeah. Ministry of Healing with sanitariums. Christologic lessons with schools. So we don't realize that we, we want to establish schools, sanitariums, churches, and and all of these place publishing houses, we have these dreams, but we don't realize that it's the information products of publishing that has historically put this message on the map. We're here because of modern publishing um, and some of the ministries that have really blessed our lives in some way or another. And it all fits together in, in this 
grand scope of things, yes. And, and I know um, some people, they, they, they look at that and they're stuck to only the way that Ellen White did it, only the way that Ellen White did it. But um, the light grows brighter and brighter in, in selling too, getting that published now. And especially the internet has changed our world and made it easier to, to get information out. And of course, we don't get information out through the internet the same way that Ellen White did. We're sure. not publishing books. We're, we're pushing buttons on a computer, which is different. I think it's the same thing. It's the same thing, only it's different. It's not, it's not a physical thing that people hold. It's information on the internet. <laughs> yeah, I understand what you're saying. Um, an another example of like one of these models that can help you to see how they all fit together is um, this guy. He does this this thing where um, I haven't read this book, but this What's the name of it? I got it for free. This is a millionaire messenger. This is make a difference in a fortune journey or device. This is basically just selling information products. But what this does is it's called a book funnel, and what he does is he has some free videos videos on YouTube, it's got like millions of views. People check out here, and then he offers this as a book, a free book. You just pay for shipping, um, and then he, he covers the book and he sends it to you. And so it's like $7 for this, which is amazing is as they go through the book, he then talks about his courses. He then talks about um, his subscription plan that people have that, that he offers that's on this subject. It's not like a book on um, sharing information and having an information product. And then the subscription is on um, like how to be a better parent. They're connected. The connected church is going into more detail and it's the same message repurposed, reformatted in a different way. So then the course is showing you how to, how to share your message with more people. And then he has like a, a physical event that you can attend. As you go to that event, then he has like just and some of the stuff in the book and the course, but it's just an, an experience and it's all mapped out there. So an ex like similar for us would be like um, having some training for like, like videos are showing how to find direction, how to overcome habits, righteousness by faith, these things that people struggle with how to find your life calling, how to like labor for God and, and give your whole heart to his service. And you've got free videos, live videos. You got repurposed content, like the leaves of autumn that are going out, Facebook, social media, like Instagram podcasts published on platforms all around the world. And then each one of these pieces are going towards like a subscription where it's going, it's, it's like a class that they can learn a little bit more, but in more detail, with like a worksheet that goes along with the teaching. And then with that subscription, then they're able to like an upsell to have a course, which is a step-by-step in-depth course. It's not just once a month, um, but it's just like, like, like 10 hours of training and they can get that education. And, and then you have the worksheets, you have the workbooks, you have the, like, the assignments, you have just the, the, the support there. And from the courses, you're getting upsell um, a ticket to a live event. That's like a camp meeting, um, or maybe better than a camp meeting, it'd be more like a, like a small group type event, or like a seminar where you're able to come together. And then the whole process there is like, it's maybe like what David Cook did. You have a week, you can have 30 classes a week, or you can have like a variety of different things where you're able to just do a workshop to understand your calling, your life direction, God's plan for your life, how to search the scriptures in a way that you're able to um, find the answers to what you're looking for to overcome these habits. And it's just a, it's a course that puts all this stuff together. It brings um, like minded people together too. Yeah, and everybody who's kind of there that had, that is interested in the, in the same thing and you could just provide, um, you know, that could be different uh, different teachers that give different angles to, to just give this well-rounded education. Um, and that that's when you could do a longer, like an in-person longer thing. But that, that could be like the, like the book funnel there too. Um, 
Yeah, you need friends too that think like you. Yeah. Is Just this making see. sense to everybody? So what about packaging them together? How do you figure that out? The key is um, the key is like to put them together like think so my question for you is think about what what you think we could provide like you have some examples of some concepts of how this looks what can we provide for the students at at each level we we what we could do is we could make the list and then we can identify what level that would be and what offer would be better what could, could we provide people so that they can get the best results so they can consume it in a way that could help them the most um what could we offer people and think about if it were you, what would you want? What would you want to learn? What would you, what would help you to receive the greatest benefit from no, um, from the education and training? Mm -hmm. About freely giving everything away? No, we're we're just talking about offering. What what would be an experience? Like you know what I was oh. thinking about. Like what would be neat is a GYC meetup. That would be so neat to be able to meet uh, together at a common event where um, the people that we're trying to reach out to, um, right. but anyways, the people in the community were just like, hey, we're all gonna meet together at GYC. We're gonna meet at this event. We're gonna have an event within the event. And we're gonna be able to do some classes together. And we just get together because they're already going to be like we go into something like that. Yes. You kind of touch bases with the little light studios. Uh -huh. um, but in order to figure this out, you have to have an avatar that you're aiming for. Um, yes, to a degree. But also there are principles that we could see that would just help um, to help anyone who's going through, who's getting an education. Uh, that, that information is transforming their lives. So what is your question? My question, good question. My question is, what is something that we could provide um, our students that, um, whether near or far off, that would help them to have the greatest experience, the offer that we're able to provide them. For step one or step three? For for any of them. Um, for the, let's just let's say for a subscription. If if people, if uh, let's just say if we charge forty nine dollars a month um, for a subscription, what would it take? What would we have to include to make it that? that uh, valuable. What step would the um, subscription be on? That'd be here. That'd be the first oh, thing. Okay. That, the, like a low, the first thing low that they're thing. paying for? Yeah. Well, we'd have to build a relationship with them first, maybe by offering tracks or a Bible study or something. Get to know each other. Is that what you're asking? I'm asking, like, like, look what I just showed you. The, these things here give some ideas, like a, like, a, like a class or a course. Think if you're going to go to a class, um, what would you want? What would, you, what would help you to learn the most of what you're going through? Um, I'm not sure I understand what you're asking. Physical things? Tell, tell us three things that fit in what you're saying. Okay. A t-shirt. And how would that fit with what you're saying? The reason why a t-shirt could help is because the goal is community. We have to develop a community. And you mm -hmm. have to have like an insider feel to that in that okay. 
that community. So if people who stick around for like two two months or something, or maybe like as they ask questions, someone asks like a format could would likely be like uh, like 40 minutes of training and then 20 minutes of question and answer on whatever the subject is. And for everyone who asks a question, we can give them a t-shirt. We're like, hey, just give us your address, we'll shift you over a so, t-shirt. So I feel like they're a part of if I understand you, we're, what we're trying to talk about is what happens in the membership, how we get people to stay interested in it. Mm. Is that what you're asking? Kind of. Subscription. Okay. Uh, so. How, what would we have to provide in a monthly subscription to some students? To keep them interested. To, to over deliver the $49 a month. Uh, like the cell phone um, concept. Yeah, it's like concept, cell phone concept. What is the cell phone concept? You know, it's like selling the iPhone for five thousand oh, okay. dollars. So I'm thinking quite a few things. I know Good. young people love um, popularity, and yes. they love that sense of community. I they, know that they really want to feel like they belong to something. And I know like in the past when part of the life was I was getting a, a visa card or something and then they try to upgrade me to another, they would give me like a discount on flights or you know, something like that. Yeah. Just to subscribe or enroll in that um, club or whatever. And I remember also that, not remember, I know that young people, all, most, like everybody has a cell phone. Like if we would give them, I don't know, we could probably- There's no them. limit. We can give them team anything. Up, team up with like uh, like the most popular cups, um, Verizon, and they would get like $5 off their bill or something like that. A discount off their bill just by subscribing to us. Or, you know, that would be attractive. You know, I So like a, a coupon? Like a coupon, yeah. yeah. Just, right. um, or like if they're gonna go shopping, they get a coupon to buy um, food or clothing or something. I don't know. Sure. That's what that's what I think. That's good. I like or that. shoes. We can even get them a GYC uh, coupon discount. Yeah, like if they, yeah, when because we could order it. together. Yeah, so something like that. That's what I'm thinking. Powerful. Because we can get they, group discounts. They like to be heard. So on. Um, on if, if we like ask them what kind of content they like and gave that to them, you know, like in a in a class or something. I agree. Uh -huh. Some of the ways that we will get their engagement is reading the comments on the live videos, the comments in the live cast, the training, and uh, the email tickets when, when and the frequently asked questions uh, or or the question Q and A session. We'll get feedback from them. Um, in that way, um, but I'm not sure if like getting the feedback is necessarily like part of an offer. It's not something we're offering. Well, them. with the feedback, you could like, let's say, oh, come up with what they want. Yeah, they yeah, absolutely. Want, yeah, definitely. Yeah, because they like to be heard. They do. Yeah. yeah. Janet, you said you had a lot of things you want to share. She just did. I shared. I'm <laughs> thinking about other things in the meantime, but. Um, I shared some things already. Uh, I'm keep. I'm gonna keep thinking. Okay. Tools. They they like tools. What like kind of tools would help and, people? Um, I don't know. It depends on what what the uh, subscription was for. No, the subscriptions for training people to, to uh, find dress from God, how to overcome. So, so like it's, it's like the concept. You sell them what people don't buy what they need. They buy what they want. Right. You sell them what they want. What do young people want? Young people want community, <clears throat> they want uh, direction, they want clarity in knowing their life direction and goals and calling and purpose. They want, uh, they want to win souls for Christ. They want to know the will of God. So you sell them that, but you give them what they need. You sell them what they want, you give them what they need. So all the marketing messaging is communicating what they want to know, what they want to experience, what they want to hear, what they want to like know, but you, but as like the missionary, we're on a mission, we know what they need to get that result and they need to study the Bible. 
they need to go to God for direction. They need to know how to listen and hear the voice of God. So uh, that's what the classes are with subscriptions is just find a direction, overcome habits, understand the calling in life, and um you have different categories or different groups of young people. Like what uh, audience are you targeting? Like everybody? Because great question. I know they are like young people. Christian youth who are missionary minded. Christian youth who are missionary minded. What about Christian youth who are missionary minded who made a mistake and they're trying to get their life back on track? Yeah, I think that, that fits because um Peter made lots of mistakes. Yeah, because I'm thinking his life back. that the young people who I know, a lot of them, it's like they felt like time was running out on them. They decided to get um, pregnant or mm -hmm. have a child. They're not married. And then the church turned their back on them and said, like, you're an outcast. Why did you do that? And yeah. it's like they feel so bad, but they know that what they did was wrong. And so now they're trying to get it right, get their lives in order. And now they're willing to, Good. you know, That's train exactly. their child in the way God wants them, and they're ready to get. Mm -hmm. So, could that be a target that, audience? Yes, it definitely can. Where are you going? Huh? I'm gonna go with that. Uh, so, could we look at a team like a group like that, or it, or that would be like? Uh, I mean, it depends on the target group. Yes, it's true. And consider this too. When you focus on a avatar, like each group is an avatar, it's a person, it's represented by one. But when, when you speak like you're talking to a person, you're able to extremely attract that individual. And you also attract the fringes of other people who have lots of similarity and overlap, but maybe not every exact specification. Because although we're targeting youth, there's a lot of people in their 60s and 80s and 70s that are like sharing the videos and engaging and they're like, this is like, this is like good what they're doing with the young people. And it's like, I'm old, but I still need to hear this. And so you're able to attract really all the people, but we have to focus. It's only when we focus on who we're reaching, it, it helps most. So the goal, the avatar is, um, is like a young Adventist, uh, male who his name is Daniel and he's like 18 years old trying to find what he's going to do in life that's the that's the avatar but in speaking to him it's going to attract women who are the same age and it's going to attract some people who have children it's going to attract some people who have families but um, but Daniel is, is the one that we're trying to reach and and the ministry, there's a principle of land and expand. The key is you want to focus so you can land in an area so that you could be like the, uh, it's like a category king or like in that subject, in that niche. It's the go-to place for inspiration, for evangelism, education, training. And then when they think of, it's like when they think of this subject, they think of the army of youth. Like that's what they think of and then once you have that in a smaller niche it's easier to get to like that level um then you're able to expand incrementally you'll take on okay now we'll take on some some young ladies in that category and then once you get that then now we can take on some some women who have children in that category and and then you you land first and then you expand incrementally facebook didn't become facebook overnight they started in one college. It blew up in that college. Then they started in Harvard, Yale, and Oxford. It blew up in that. Then it was just all college-wide. And then colleges loved it. And then they opened to the public. It was exponential. And then they, you know, acquired different things. So, so what do you think would help you, Tina, if you were... Um, for getting an education, what types of things do you resonate with? How does your mind work? How do you learn? Okay. What do you like? A lot of a lot of young people. It's like they're thinking time is running out, and they need a wife. They need a husband. So if we could put that in a package and give to them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. 
<laughs> but yeah, young people. Okay, we got all things up. Family, that family setting. <laughs> No, but, but uh, there's really three markets that every successful product falls into. It's relationships, which includes like finding partners, spouses, marriage, divorce. Like, there's a lot of sub-markets within that. It's relationships, there's money, what are you gonna do, finances, self-supporting industry, things like that. And then there is health. And then health goes into a wide variety of things. Relationships is very important because people, like, the membership that we're doing, we are teaching people how to go to God's word to find the person God has designed for your life. So that if you have options, you can close the door on options that are not God's perfect plan for you. And that's exactly what we're selling. We have to sell them the relationships of partners and be like, hey, time is running out. You might feel you're desperate. You might feel that, you know, if, if not this person, then who? And it's like, well, we're going to show you how that you could know for certainty to the Lord's will and that you don't have to feel desperate. And so that's what you sell them what they want. And then you give them what they need, which is how to study the Bible to know the will of God regarding relationships. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's essential. Absolutely. Young people need relationship counsel. Counsel, yes. And also young people... Also, we we also need to know that we can be content. Yes. Not everybody is going to have a spouse or a husband or a wife and children. Yeah. Some pe God needs some people to. Who, um, I think it, one of them who who. Paul. Yeah, and. And he, Daniel. He, it's not a eunuch. It's like he yeah. deliberately chose that path to serve God. Yeah. So some people are going to be like that in the last day. Sure. So people need to be content and say, Lord, whatever your will is, let it be done. Yep. So how can we talk about that? So just going, going through the studies. Yeah. Just We could teach people how to study, like bring all the scriptures together on the subject, whether that's marriage or being content or like studying those concepts. And it's like I've, I've had some of my students who are seeking for um, direction in life and I gave them principles on how they could find answers and they were studying the word of God and they decided they're like you know I like God wants me to be content and like we're living the last days and now's not the time to have a relationship and then I've had other students of mine that I've taught how to study the Bible and they're seeking and searching and then they see it's like well you know families can be a blessing and they can still reflect God's character in these last days so um it's like and then they see see things differently but we teach people how to go to god for the answers like yeah. william miller's 14th rule he said right at the end of the rules he says if i were a teacher in divinity in schools of divinity i would see the aptitude of a young person's mind i give them a bible teach them how to study the bible for themselves and, and if their mind was well then i'd send them out to the world to do the world good and but if they weren't then i would stamp bigot on their forehead and send them out as slaves they're just going to be reflectors of other men's thoughts. So the first step is knowing how to say the Bible. Mm -hmm. But it's the marketing is how you how you pull upon the desires that they want, and you're attaching that with what you're offering, and it's direction from the Word of God. So the course, the website that we own is directionfromgod.com. Praise the Lord. So it's what the whole thing is about, the subscriptions, how to find direction in those essential areas, areas of life yeah. from the word of God. But we don't, uh, we'll give that to them once they're, they're you yeah. Know. yeah, because even this morning, I, I, my sister called me early and then I called her back. And then I was asking like, if she heard about this young man who um, he's working with Kanye with the Sunday services and he's a Sunday Adventist and he said, his background is Sunday Adventist, mm -hmm. and um, you know, he his family, the way he started, he used to go and play for the Sunday churches, and they would give him, you know, and then now he's getting paid, and he said, like, he associate um, blessings with getting a good paycheck at the end of the day. But I was telling my sister, and she was like, um, one thing she realized with our Sunday Adventist churches, 
is that like the person, they don't have a job or an income and they would drive over the bridge, go to New Jersey, play for the church and then the church they would give them a fruit basket and say thank you. But then the Sunday churches would give them like a, a, a little stipend or something. And the people would appreciate that more than the fruit basket. Fruits are healthy, yes, but you can't use that to pay bills. So she was she was saying, you know, that's wrong where the church is concerned because she she's go she's a soloist and she would, you know, sing at um different places and the people would come up to her and say, Could you sing at my church? And she wouldn't she wouldn't they say, How much you charge? And she said, I don't charge. But at the end of the day, they would give her a thank you or you know, a blessing or something like that. And it would be well received. So she was saying like that um is very appealing and attractive for the young people they know that they can get some kind of tangible yeah monetary gift or something mm -hmm. because they have and spirit of prophecy clearly says that we should have a fund set apart for supporting these yeah. young people to encourage them yeah. to enter into ministry but like for me first time i was invited to speak at a camp meeting i was given simply $50. I was like 17 or something. And the pastor was like, so I'm giving you $50 because the notes for prophecy says to that they would encourage encourage young people. And these other people, like these ministers, they have families, they have like churches, they, they do this, they travel to places. We're giving them $100 a slot and we take up a love offering to give them and we pay for their travel and their food while they're here. Uh, but you're you're just in high school. You don't really have a lot of bills, so we're providing that. And then I was just like, whoa! Just by explaining like how that stuff worked and how they had families, that just seeing that as possible, and they like that their expenses were covered and they're able to give the word of God, and that's what they're able to do for like their life is to serve Christ. I was just like, that fifty dollars changed my life. It made me realize that this is a tangible, possible decision in life and it that alone was all it took to endure the dean of my high school sitting down with me the principals my aunts like just trying to convince my mom my sister saying you're going to throw away your life you're going to be a bum you're going to be you're going to be on the streets don't do this you're, you're like doing the wrong thing and everybody is telling me like what don't you care about your life and my students were just like i had teachers to stop class to say how important like this college education is and if you're not going to college then it's like, you're gonna be awful. And everyone's like, Ugh! they looked at me and they're just like, like, like I was diseased like in that class. And all of it was like, I knew that I was gonna work for God and it didn't require a high school, I mean, a college education. And that I'm gonna labor for souls. And that when God's my employer, he'll set up, he'll take care of all my needs. Didn't know how it was gonna happen. I just knew that's what I was gonna do. And I'd be miserable doing anything other than sharing with others who God has shared with me. And so I just went forward, and it, it was life changed. So here Praise I am, seven years later. Praise God. God. To provide all my needs. Amen. Yeah. Oh, Tina's going too? Oh, okay. Why is Tina going? Tina's at the place. What? Why does she have to look at the place? She's interested in looking at the place. <laughs> no, you're not. What? She's not interested, Sister Kathy. Are you forcing her? No. That's <laughs> not. But why is she going? She was going to take pictures. Oh, she's just going there to take pictures? <laughs> it's like a three hour thing just to take pictures. If you want to go to. No. You don't want Tina to go? Well, I was just wondering. That seems pretty mm -hmm. far. Thank you. It's 1244. <laughs> <laughs> Everything happens for a reason. Yeah, definitely. Um, and so, good suggestions. Cameron, what about you? You've been really quiet. Do you, have you been like adding things in your notes? So, you know, sometimes people would take notes and add it in theirs rather than like speak up. What do you suggest would be something that would provide a lot of value for some young people?
one of the things that really helped me, uh -huh. um, I wasn't really aware of podcasts. Uh -huh. I didn't really, you know, listen to them. Uh -huh. But what I would do instead was put videos on and just listen to those in the background. Okay. And like even your videos, before I came up here, I was doing that. Um, and those videos, you know, they encouraged me and helped me to sort of... Um, to make sense of your decisions? Yeah. Praise the Lord. So podcasts, providing that for people. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And what we could do is we can take every every video training that we provide, like the monthly live cast, and we can strip the audio and provide that as an audio download with the video live, like the live video that you can interact and engage with and get answers. But then you can have the video replays with the, the audio replays that you've been downloaded and listened to also. That would be great. But that podcast has been such a blessing in my life. Tremendous. Mm -hmm. You're just saying on podcasts, audio files would be really helpful to get people. Oh, I'm telling you, once you have the library of content on these subjects, and it's just like Oshi Glows, every live video that we do every single day is, one, changing people's lives, and two, you're able to let the audience vote what are their favorites, and you can transcribe that, and they become physical printed books that you now are able to offer at camp meetings, and GYCs are just all sorts of places, and you can provide support for co-printers. Here's something I wanna share with you guys. What we wanna do with the courses and with the, um, but, uh, the books and um, whatever the thing's called, uh, subscription, is uh, provide what are called affiliate links. It's basically co-printing. It's where any students in the Army of Youth or any worker in the Army of Youth is able to have a link and send it to someone and that individual with their link, their ID attached to that link, they get, they get put in this funnel. And when they go through the funnel, when they purchase, that the referrer, the, the student, the worker, the, the laborer, the soldier of Christ who referred the person with that link, when they purchase the subscription, they get 50% of $50 every single month. So just 25, 25, 25. So it's like, like when it's the content, what I see is like, if we're able together to discuss, like what are the needs that young people have? What are the great desires that, like just look at our experience. What do we wanna know? A lot of this is about finding direction in our own life mm -hmm. and documenting that. and. And as we document that, it's blessing other people. That's sharing our testimonies, Revelation 12, 11. And as we do that, it's changing others. And they're, they're coming along with the journey. And they're being a part of a community. And um, so we just got to think, like, what do we wish we had when we first started? Or what questions do we currently have? And I believe that if together we're able to put together the content, as far as, like, the 52 topics to cover for the course of the year in, like, live streams and, and like, repurposing on to be omnipresent in different places, um, then it's the content that like we're interested in, we have a passion for, we want to help others, and we know we could bless them, and um, it can help to form some of the other value ladder, like starting with the membership, once a month, put together the worksheet, the audio, just some slides, some tangible things that they can have and go through, and then like month after month after month, you're going to have a library of videos that are sequential and then um, and only give them access to three months library for the $50 a month. Um, and then the fourth month, uh, you could use that as a course, like a bonus course or an upsell course that's all on the same subject. So if you do a three-part series, just like these guys, you do a three-part series, now you've got a course. And a DVD with ministries all around the world, this is Joyce Brown. She's a medical missionary, traveled all over China doing hydrotherapy, helping people with cancer. She did a um, sanitarium for like 12 years, a wellness center over in Washington State. And she put together this $20 DVD showing people how to do practical. It says hydrotherapy in action. It's a two-part series, but this is a video course. 
Adventists have been doing this. Ministers have been doing this for years, doing stuff like this, and that's how they support their ministries. But um, imagine if you got 50% for every one of these that you sold. It's like people who want to know about hydrotherapy are like, oh, I know something just for you. And you could just send a link. And you never have to like stock inventory. You they send the link, they purchase, you get ten dollars for every purchase that they make. Like that that is nice. Nice, nice, right? Yeah. So um this make sense to everybody. I'm curious. Um out of what we've covered so far, what excites you the most? Let's start with Jen. Mm -mm, don't start with All right, Tina, what excites <laughs> you the most? Start with me. <laughs> she said, please come on. What about you? Hmm. What's something that excites you about um, what we've covered so far? Does it have to be excite? What's another word you'd rather answer? Stands out. Sure, you can do that. Okay. What do you got, Carmen? Something you look forward to. understand how this all works I'm seeing more of the the picture I used to have like a really really hard time understanding like this um, but I'm kind of seeing like how how it works a lot clearer than, than it used to that's good out of what you see works what what stands out to you what makes the most sense I don't know, like, one thing I know, like, America, you could be, like, like, the worst when it comes to religion and all of that, but something about Americans, like, one thing I've seen in my life, if, okay, if you're driving down a highway, right, and you see a plane crash, you know everybody's going to pull over. And they're gonna try. They're gonna run to that area. They yeah. don't care if it's gonna block. They're just trying to help as many people as possible. It's like that superhero tendency with Americans. I don't know if it's just American for. Um. Just Jamaican not do that? They wouldn't. Probably yeah. Oh. I don't know. I think it's a humanity thing. Oh okay. So, but yeah, people are willing to put their life at risk to help others. Mm -hmm. And we have our primary example. Jesus came. He, he knew what was happening. He wasn't like a hundred percent, like all details of it, but he knew he had to be the lamb. Mm -hmm. He had to die and all of that. But to be in that situation where it's, yeah, the rubber hits the road, mm -hmm. he did what he had to do. Mm -hmm. He died to self and he gave his life for us. And God sees our heart. He sees that we have a passion for service and doing his will. And right now it might seem as if, you know, when we ask the questions, no, it's not popping right away. But we have a faith and we know that with prayer, 
God will supply us with what we need to get this accomplished. So keep pressing, keep praying, keep trusting in the Lord. Amen. Because He will keep His fire providing. He will supply all our needs according to His riches and glory. Amen. So true. Even sharing that. And even, I don't know what the future holds, but I'm glad to be here in this class today when we're brainstorming and talking. I can say, I was, I was there. Yeah. I don't know. But whatever the Lord said, God is in control. Amen. So, yeah. Thank you for sharing. What's, what are you thinking about, Carmen? You look very pensive, thoughtful. I understand the principle, mm -hmm. but I don't understand how we're going to apply it to, you know, what we're trying to do. When you say you don't know how we're going to apply it to what we're trying to do, what do you mean by that? Like, okay, what, what is it that we're trying to provide for others? Great question. Oh, that's because you weren't. But yeah, you were. You were at the class, the, the farewell talk. The, Tina wasn't there. Okay. So my question is the same. Like I, I'm kind of. That was the same question. This. Uh, re remember that the value ladder that we talked about earlier. I'll send it to everyone on Messenger real quick. Come on. Uh, Tina. She was. Well, she has it. But I'm gonna send it to you again. Okay. Clark. All right, so we got this. I want you to picture this in reverse. We have so I'll go contents. And we go three. We've got um, subscription. That was way too long. I shouldn't have spelled that whole thing. Course. And then my training class. This is our value ladder. And the key is we need a product. We need something to provide for people in exchange for value and money. And the subscription is something that people are able to subscribe to. What, what I suggest is that we have something called, I don't know, okay, some of this might be a little direction from God, and we can maybe just call it program, for lack of a better term. So we got a direction from God program. So where where is the ladder? Would that be? This would be right here. Okay. Right here. So we can go D, F, G, P. This could be D, F. G, C, because that's course. Okay? Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know. Let, let's just keep them with it. We go D, F, G, E for event. Okay? Just in concept. So we've got a D, F, G, P, direction from God program. What this is, this consists. So this is where we, we've kind of seen what we're looking at. Now we create the offer. This is let's. We just pick and choose what, what we think we could do. So if we have this course for $49 a month, you have access to live. Good morning. All right. So we can close here and um, begin like. Continue. Oh, we give you permission to go 10 minutes. You guys want to go 10 minutes oh. more? 
Okay. Uh, I think she just grunted. I don't know. <laughs> she just shaved her head. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we'll go ten minutes. So, Father in heaven, bless our time. Be with us as we go through this. You give us wisdom. We want to follow your will. Just teach us, Lord. We we put all into your hands. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. And just to let you guys know, we switch the schedule. I guess you two weren't here. But this is what our new schedule looks like. But but from 4.30 to 7.30, it used to be kind of like this free, like, unclear time that was a little, it's kind of a confusing transition. I encourage you, at 4 o'clock, I want both of you to listen to that audio message um, that you can catch up on what you're, you were there. Oh, 4 o'clock, we have a Bible study. 4 o'clock? With who? Yeah, we have a Bible study. Okay, great. All right, well, when do you, when you come back? You're not. Five o'clock. So about five o'clock, can you listen to that audio message of help make sense more about what's going on? Oh. Yeah, okay. All right. Um, so what we're talking about is live monthly training. Um, is that kind of like what you're doing? I mean, I don't know. Is no, no, no. The I, there's no stupid question. With the videos? kind of in the sense that it's live. Subject-wise, what we provide for free is, <clears throat> maybe I should get a bed. I'm gonna do a bed. This is the difference of the content. We're sharing what and why. What we monetize is how. Just like in our education, like a lot of sermons, a lot of preaching is like, this is what the gospel says. This is what God, God wants you to do. This is why you should do it. But there's a lot of how that is missing in the sermons and the preaching of the gospel. Like when you go throughout the, 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 the pulpit, you see a lot of people telling you what the Bible says and why we need to be doing the, like why we need dress reform, why we need um, health reform, why we need education, why we need to be evangelists, why we need to be gospel workers, but they don't tell you how to win your neighbor to Christ. They don't tell you how to how to prepare healthful food. They don't tell you how to be self-supporting. There's so much information out there. Like what is a self-supporting missionary? Why we need to we need to be like supporting, but they don't like. So many ministries are asking. How can I financially support myself in ministry? And there's more questions than answers. You see what's going on? So what we're doing is in the live videos every single day, we're producing content that's telling people what they need to do for like finding family, why they, they need a family or why we, we're creating family, why relationships matter, why, like, how, like what to, what to do, like, um, what it means to be a missionary, what is evangelism, what is like being intentional relationships and just finding counsel and, and building mentors and things like that. So you're, you're giving more of like just life, biblical, biblical life um, encouragement. It's kind of like a, like, like you want them to like come up more. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's kind of like Daniel and Carrie, you're, you're helping them uh, break down myths that prevent people from um, from believing what like like we believe that we we're created for service. We we're, we're our purpose is ministry, and that um, like that the Lord has a plan. He wants to raise up an army of youth, rightly trained, to finish the work, and that those laboring those church membership should rally together with the church officers to finish the work. So, anyways. Um, but they don't know how that works. So in the subscription, we're kind of doing more tangible. We're giving frameworks. We're giving like very directive, um, like coaching, mentoring, counseling type of like the stuff that you would get when uh, when you labor with a minister and you're just like having those conversations. Like I, like I've been so blessed by being able to just be personal friends and traveling across the country with a variety of medical missionaries, evangelists, co-operators people from all over and just being able to talk and those conversations that we that we have side by side 
when nobody else is around, like that is the, some of the most valuable life-changing things that I've ever heard. But that's not the conversation that's going to be preached in the pulpit. It just, it's not going to happen. It hasn't in the past, it won't now. Sometimes that training is provided at schools. Um, when you pay for like education, you go to, you know, like well, Melinda Andrews or whatever, that is going to be more like a, like not the information we want, but you know, like Heartland or UG Pines or Wildwood, some other places, they kind of have a semblance of that too. Um, but the subscription, the course and things, that's kind of like the tangibles of, that's the type of conversation that you would expect to have in the car as you're driving across country and you're just having like those very, those vulnerable life experiences and just like changing stuff. Does that make sense? Does that answer your question a little bit? Yes? Okay. So here, live monthly training. And with that, they'll, they'll provide like um, tools. So the tools might be worksheet. Um, audio downloads. And that might be like a PDF that they can print and fill out. Uh, we might encourage them to get a binder like this and then just get a binder oops, and put together all these worksheets so that they could just keep it all together as they go through. Uh, and it's, um, and then what was something she said? Oh, well, um, there's question and answer. Like, you know how many people how many young people are going throughout, they're looking for counsel and they, they, they have so many questions, they wanna ask questions, but they don't ask them in public. And like, while it's like the pastors aren't visiting them in their homes, like they don't have that one-on-one, -on -one. like who do these young people have in their life to just ask questions about ministry and life and direction from God that have studied, that they're able to get these questions. A lot of the influences around, even the parents, they're confused. They wanna give the best to the children, but they can only give what they have. And a lot of our parents just don't have what God desires them to have to provide for the children. So, um, and a lot of that stuff is found in our books, our publications, Ministry of Healing, Adventist Home, Councils of Diets and Foods. So we could package this stuff. And we're basically just re reporting. We're taking the stuff that the counsel that we have um, in the Spirit of Prophecy and we're providing this in a step-by-step -step way. Um, that people can get those results. So question and answer is huge. I mean, I can't tell you how many people I've studied with that they're in this point where they're just like, I want to know how to study. I don't know where to start. I want to know how to uh, be an evangelist, but like, where do I go? And like, they don't have, and the people who have the answers, it's one of my biggest pain points. The people who have the answers are so busy doing the work, they're not taking the time to train others. They're so busy, just like their hands are like they're in the ditches and trenches and they're traveling, they're speaking and they're doing all these things. But the people have their hands up, they're saying, me, me, like, teach me, I'm ready. Like, I want to go. Here I am, I send me. They, they're like walking by and they're heavy loaded with this big burden on their back. And they're just like, oh, nobody's like ready to help. It's like, where are the workers? We need workers. But then it's like, oh, they're right here. You just got to train them. I want trained workers. But, you know, that's not really going to happen. We don't just find workers, we have to develop them. We have to train them. Um, so providing people with answers. Like that's valuable, having access um, to ask questions. Um, and like a community where you have, and it, and it might be like a Facebook group community, but uh, there's a, a lot of courses that do that. Um, uh, group. Community. And we might find a better platform to do it on, but um, maybe, maybe not. And there is where like the army of youth and students are able to interact with each other. They're able to talk with each other, ask questions, and answer each other's questions. It's like, there are some people that I know, some young people that are so, so knowledgeable about the word of God, like you, and you, and you, and you guys have answers compared to some of these other people. Like, you guys have extreme privileges being around here with like pastor smith and the church here and just the word of god being shared and, and the way that it is like think about other environments we've been in life this doesn't exist 
So we are privileged youth and we have a duty to impart to others what we have. And so what I realized did like Nikisha um, knows her Bible. Rebecca really knows her Bible. She is a Bible student. And I've been talking with her over the last like two years and just training with her and spending time with her one-on-one. -on -one. She's been going through a lot of slides and going through materials and producing most of the slides for Rock Sky Ministries, the online church for the last like several couple of years. And so she's got a lot going on there. And she has a just like she has like no friends on her island that want to hang out with her or or that like you know they spiritually connect with. And she has a time to be able to study with people and answer their questions. So on the community, we can find and appoint moderators that know the Bible and like the council. And when there's all these young people asking for questions, they're just like how I started. I started. Because my friend, one of the ways I started, Robert Latham in England had a video that went viral, had over a million views, and he just had people pouring in asking questions about that the, the truth. And then he's like, I'm going to university. I don't have time to answer all these people. I want to. He's like, hey, you have the time to answer questions. Would you follow up with them? I'm like, yes. And so he would just send me like contact after contact. I follow up with all of them. I do so many Bible studies but it came from this source so the thing is like we spend like hours hours and hours to find one contact who's willing to study but what we're sitting on is a gold mine of contacts a list of people that are ready ripe, and that, like we will spend hours doing a study with someone who just wants to argue wants to waste your time it just is not interested there they just want to listen or, or distract you or they want to teach you what they have to share and it's just like, you're spinning your wheels and going, like, you're not getting as far. Wow, there are, there's a massive amount of people that are just like, I got questions. I'm thirsty. I'm ready. And you tell them once and they'll apply it to their life. Get studied with this lady in, in China. And she's like, here, tell this to my students. She was a teacher. And this like atheist, um, like students, they're, they're like, okay, you say why you believe the Bible and I'll interpret for you and you can teach it to my class. And like, okay. And then the next day, she's got the president of the college who, who's, who's like, hey, will you teach them? It's like, whoa, sure. And then he, she just bring like neighbors, friends, family, whoever. She's like taking copious notes. She's like, I'm, I'm learning so I could teach this. And it's like, that's the type of people that are available. But here we're spending time with people who are like, hey, come, come over to church, come over to this event. I'm like, no, nah, I, don't, I don't like people and I don't want to be here. And, and, uh, and then you get there to study, and they're like, well, that tell, reminds me of this story over here. And, and they want to talk about all these things, not the Bible study. They just want to talk about other stuff. And we're, like, spending a lot of time in there. So my point is, what's beautiful about a Facebook community is it's contact generation. It's like a whirlpool of contacts that are so ripe, thirsty, ready. They're qualified. They went through the funnel. You put traffic here, and then you come out a highly qualified, trained missionary student. But along the way, they, they get to a point where there's follow-up and you connect the gospel workers with the contacts you need the help. And then, um, so anyways, it's able to help answer their questions, learn how to study. We can have, um, you know, things like that would be helpful. Um, like, I want to say that kind of like what we have would be good, but like in the future, there's things that we could work towards. Like, we don't have this all mapped out but if we did go in the future we could we could upsell through like a course subscription in the future we could like she was saying have coupons we can have like an event uh, ticket um, where we can host a week or two week just boot camp where all these young people, it's like a youth camp, but young people are able to come over and like GYC, GYC has this big event that they do. But imagine if GYC had an online community that's really like it's providing education and training like during that time and you're just step by step going through because that's that's what their mission and passion and desire is. The same quote that inspired GYC is the one that inspired us with such an army of workers as a youth, right? The trains. That's like they talk about their history, and that's what really got them going. But um, we'll kind of go through that. The thing is, and, and here's kind of like where this fits together. 
is every month we have a month to be able to put together slides, a tangible worksheet with clear directions, fill in a blank, just personalized, apply to your life type of thing, not like the sermonizing of saying what and why in theory. It's very practical. Go to a practical godliness. Um, you have a, a month of that, and I mean, a month to prepare for that, to strip the audio, to, to get that together. And then um, you have those videos, it's like 40 minute videos that are being recorded each month. And you have, you're developing a library with all these really quality worksheets and uh, things packaged together. Then eventually you can put together like a, uh, like a workbook. You can put together, like here, this is Experts Academy. You can put together a workbook with worksheets that you're providing people to go through um, a course. Because they have, uh, I'll put here, you have three month access. Three month uh, replay access. And then after the three months, that video disappears. But the video we will use for putting together a course. And once we have enough of them on the same subject, we can provide a course for like, usually courses go, that would be like a two here, that it's about $199 to like $1,000. Anywhere in between is how much the courses go for. Um, and, the, and the key is you just package it with things. And if people don't wanna pay $200 for a course, you can downsell them to the subscription. So wherever it is, um, whatever helps fit them. And what's nice about this is you're providing options based on their financial resources or available or commitment. You provide something at any price to be able to help them where they're at. And it gives, and some people, no matter what you do, there will always be people who will want to order more. So they'll just want to just do more and more and more. And that's just how things work. So as you're able to provide them greater value and more personal, but like just a better offer, then they'll want more. It's usually 10% at each, each step. With this, okay, I know we have a, we have a few of this from what age to ask what age. Because I know right now, a lot of parents, a lot of people are saying that yes, the public school system is a mess and it's crazy what's going on and they need this type of package for their children. So anybody could, with that um, maturity, could use this program. Yes. See, we are not, we're not limiting anyone from, from joining being a part of this, but our messaging, our marketing, our conversation is geared towards just starting out like Land and Expand, starting out 18 year old Adventist males who have an interest in the Bible. Um, that's who we're gearing, but right. that's going to attract, like you said, mothers okay. and parents and right. children and of all ages. We're not gonna turn anyone down, okay. but it's the messaging that we're focusing on so we can attract in that category and we'll grow from there. And as we grow our services and opportunities will grow too to be able to help with these different things. Um, and it can grow into a, like, a, um, like a, um, a school or a homeschooling program or something as well. Yeah, we, we need an army and it's just, um, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Did that answer your question, Tina? What we're offering here? Do you think this would be worth forty nine dollars? A lot of yeah, it is priceless. Um, I realize in studying the offers of other ministers and gospel workers, a lot of these sermons are priced between twenty dollars to ninety nine dollars for these programs, and it's like a one time deal. And they don't have the community, the question and answers, um, and it's not live. They're just a pre-recorded DVD that's just, that's it. And you don't get anything else with it. It's like 20 to to $100 for something like that. Carmen, did that answer your question? 
move how it fits together. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Is that a question? <sighs> okay. It sounds good. How about we close with the word prayer? Tina, would you like to pray for us? Sure. All right, thank you. Our Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for this um, privilege that we could spend learning, O oh Father, how how that we can be self-supporting, O oh Father, and and yet work for you. Father, I pray that as we as we continue that you might help us to think upon these things, O oh Father, and guide and direct our minds that we can, Father, just in whatever we do, O oh Father, even in the business, O oh Father. Um, serve you, O oh Father, that your name might be glorified. We pray that you be with us as we go um, our separate ways or whatever we our duties that we have to do, O oh Father. I thank you. Be with us in a special way in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you.